address, if you would, the role that the U.S. government, this wasn't willy-nilly cowboys, you know, running wild. This was a U.S. government and its policies that ultimately bastardized, took away from, uh, stole from the Native Americans, mm -hmm. made treaties that ultimately were broken, if you want to say willy-nilly, that's where willy-nilly came in. So if you would address that for a moment. Well, yes, and see, it started with one of the first treaties was, was a New York treaty about, about 15, 16 that came in. That was one of the first treaties. But in every one of those treaties that they set up with the Indians, they put an inclusion in there saying this, that if you were to cooperate with us and be able to help us maintain the slavery system we set up in this country, you know, and we will reward you and compensate you. We'll give you, fr we'll give you clothing, we'll give <coughs> you food, we'll give you weapons, you know, and we'll, and, we'll, and we'll even call you civilized if you help us maintain slavery. Every treaty contained a clause to help Indians to s shut down black folk. Slavery could never have existed in this country and been maintained without the full participation of the American tribes. That's why they started calling them civilized rock because they began to say, you quit hunting in the woods and running wild and, and get yourself some land and get yourself some slaves. So, so Indians became slave hunters, slave traders, and, uh, and, 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 and in the final analysis, the all civilized tribes, the Choctaw, Chickasaw, Cherokee, and Seminole Indians, they all fought with the South to maintain slavery. And so therefore, and, and they got benefits from it. And that led to going back to the earlier question you asked me about, about reparations. And, and even after the Civil War ended, the Choctaw and Chickasaw were still holding about 12 or 15,000 slaves even after the Civil War ended. The United States government sent in troops saying, you got to get rid of this slavery and, and let, set black folk free. And they set up what's called the 1866 Indian Treaties with these five civilized tribes, which says that black people in this country must not only turn them loose, they must get benefits. They must get forms of reparations. Going back to your earlier question, you must, you must first of all, set them free. Two, you must give them an, an option. And this is for all black freedmen and all blacks who lived in the Indian territory and all black Indians. You must set them free allow them to have membership in the tribe. You must give them, uh, make them, uh, like, let them have access to all the resources on the reservation. You must let them also be tax exempt. You must let them have free education. You must also let them be able to uh, uh, give them $150 uh, in cash. You must give them 160 acres of land. And in present day time, those black Indians under the 1866 treaties should be getting, they could also hold gambling casinos. Now this country has, has never carried out the full mandates, but yet we are still honoring it for Indians. Right now, all the benefits that Indians are getting in this country are getting it from the 1866 Indian Treaty because they took up arms against the United States in, 18, in the Civil War. They killed off, wiped out all previous treaties. Now every year you, <coughs> in, in the White House, we get about 560 some white Indian chiefs, which in history they call $5 Indians because 90% of the people call themselves Indians nowadays are not, are not really Indians. Those are whites passing as Indians because they paid five dollars to the Dawes Commission to get their name on the Dawes Roll so they can get all these advantages. Mm -hmm. But every year they get invited to the White House. <coughs> and every year they got an approximately three, three and a half billion dollars every year, even that Obama's been in office. They got money into the Federal Indian Bureau. Now see, if you were to talk about reparations, black folks have been getting all this money all these years too. But they got shut out because the Indians in 1938, they sent, to, they sent a letter to the to the Department of Bureau of Indian Affairs saying, how do we shut black folk down to make sure they never get any reparations? And that, that, that letter floated around in, in, the, in the federal government from about 1938 to about 1941. Then it went to the Secretary for the Department of Interior. And the Department of Interior looked and says, aha, said, how do I come up with a scheme to shut down blacks so they get no reparations in this country? He said, what you do, you Indians come up with a new concept called a quantum blood law, which says that black folk are not entitled to any of the benefits of the 1866 treaty yeah. in terms of reparations yeah. unless they can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that they got one quarter Indian blood in them. Yeah. And we make Indian blood sacred like, like Jesus Christ's blood. And therefore, they've been shutting blacks out all these years. That's why they didn't get any reparations. To go back to your earlier point. And the last point on reparations, you asked me earlier about a blueprint. This country's always given reparations to <coughs> all groups except black folk, even though black folk were the ones who built the country. They built the bridges, they picked the cotton, they built the highways, they built the government buildings. They were the backbone of this nation. But now, so in, in, the, in the Marshall Plan, we gave billions of dollars to, uh, to, uh, to, the, to, the, to Germans after World War II. We got under, under what's called a point uh, four program. We, we gave reparations to, to Japan, Japan, Japanese. We gave reparations to American Indians. We gave reparations to everybody but black folk. Yet black folk are locked into the bottom of a vertical order 
in a descending order of wealth, owning, and poverty, I mean, and, and control of resources, and nobody wants to address the issue.